In this tutorial, you will learn how to quantitate gene expression using RNA-seq data. So there are a lot of different softwares available for counting reads per genes or transcripts. Uh, here we will look in more detail at HTSeq, which is one of the most common softwares for this. HTSeq can uh, count reads per genes or exons. Uh, there are also packages like cufflinks and string tie, which can count reads uh, both per genes and transcripts. And then Callisto and Salmon, which calculate per transcripts. So they don't actually require that the reads would have been mapped to the genome first. So let's, let's look at HTC. So as input files, it needs a BAM file, and it also needs a GTF file, which contains known gene locations. Uh, when it counts reads per gene, it actually considers a gene as a union of all of its exons. When you supply a GTF file, if you want to provide your own, uh, as opposed to using one from Chipster, it, it's important that both the GTF file and BAM file use the same chromosome naming. So if in the BAM file, uh, chromosome uh, one is just called one, then the same has to apply to the GTF file. So not CHR1, but just one. It's important to realize that uh, HTSeq doesn't count multi-mapping reads, or ambiguous reads, and we'll have a look at this in a moment. HTSeq has three modes for counting. We'll also have a look at this in more detail. And you have to pay attention if your data was made with a stranded RNA-seq protocol. So let's look into that. There are several stranded protocols available and they work in slightly different ways. So you need to check which one was used when your data was prepared. If you don't know, uh, there is a tool in Chipster that helps you to find that out. And then uh, you need to indicate the correct uh, way of strandedness as a parameter in HTSeq, the same way as we did before in HiSat Aligner. So it can be confusing when we talk about multi-mapping reads and ambiguous mapping reads. So let's look at these examples. So here we have a piece of genome. In this particular area, there are two genes, A and B. And our read, which is the green box here, maps to this point. So it actually <coughs> overlaps with both gene A and B. So this situation, we call ambiguous because we cannot tell with confidence from which gene this read came from. However, if our data was produced with a stranded protocol, we would be able to resolve this situation. So this was ambiguous. Now the multi-mapping then means a situation where the read maps to several places in genome. So here, read A, maps to, um, to, to two different genes, which are located in different parts of the genome. So this is not a unique mapping read. Then let's have a look at the HTC count modes. So the default mode is the, the union mode. It doesn't make a uh, much difference in many situations which mode you use. So for example, here the situation is clear. All the three modes would count the read to gene A. But then you have situations like this, when the read kind of overhangs the gene or maps to the intron of a gene. And in this case, the strict mode would not count it for that gene. Um, then also down here, we have differences. So here the read maps uh, totally within gene A and partially to gene B. So here the default union mode would not 
counted for, for either of these genes. So HTCQ is a BAM file and a GTF file. Chipster has a lot of GTF files on the server, but you are also welcome to use your own. Um, here we can have a quick look what the GTF file looks like. So it has nine obligatory uh, columns, such as chromosome and start and end of the feature, the strand. And then the last column actually contains lots and lots of information. So here you have the gene IDs, transcript IDs, and so forth. Uh, if you want to use your own GDF file uh, with HTSIG, uh, you have to make sure that the structure is such that all the exons of a gene are marked with the same gene ID. Uh, this is the case with GDF files from Ensemble, uh, but it, it doesn't hold for the UCSC. GDF files. Then a couple of words about uh, whether you should count reads at the gene level or at the transcript level. So here I have an example. This is uh, uh, from, from this paper here, which illustrates a situation when counting at gene level uh, might cause you problems. So we have one gene which has two isoforms and the blue isoform is twice as long as the red isoform. Now let's imagine that we had samples from two different conditions, say control and cancer for example. Uh, we did RNA sequencing and then we count reads for this particular gene. So in our example here, we get 10 reads uh, in the normal sample and five reads in the cancer sample. So if we just look at these numbers, 10 and 5, we would say that, okay, the expression of this gene is downregulated in cancer. However, um, as you can see in, in this example, uh, what seems to be happening is that the gene actually changes expression from the long isoform to the short isoform. And now it's, it's just a fact of life that longer transcripts give more counts, they give more fragments and hence more counts. So in reality, in this case, actually, there is no fault change. The gene has just changed uh, the expression from one isoform to the other. So now the challenge becomes, so I think everybody agrees that we would like to uh, quantitate gene expression at the transcript level. However, there are some challenges. So for example, in this case, well, it's obvious that these reads come from the longer isoform and this read comes from the shorter isoform. Now, in the perfect world, the uh, coverage of transcripts would be uniform. So we would get e equal amounts of reads from different parts of the transcripts. However, this is not always the case. As we have seen before at the alignment level uh, quantitation tutorial video. So, for example, in this case here, uh, if we only had these reads, we wouldn't be able to tell which isoform was expressed. So we are really relying on the existence of this one and the other ones. And because of this, many people choose to still quantitate expression at the gene level. <laughs> 